Hi viewers in this class we are going to discuss cloning methods under this topic we will going to discuss introduction to the topic and different methods of cloning like cell cloning animal cloning and the gene cloning let us define the cloning cloning is the process of generating genetically identical copies of gene or an organism the identical copies are called as the clones cloning is broadly classified into two types namely natural cloning and the artificial cloning let us start with the natural cloning prokaryotic organisms like the protozoans for example paramecium produce clones by binary fission or by budding and in eukaryotic organisms gastrointestinal cells and skin cells they undergo mitotic division and produce clones this is usually seen in the prokaryotes see this is the turbellarian which undergoes a binary fission and usually shows the one mother cell one mother organism undergoes binary fission and forms the two daughter cells like the mitotic division and if you observe this is from the celenti data and it is a hydra in the favorable conditions where the food material is abundantly available then the bottom part of the hydra produces a small bud it develops thoroughly after the complete development the daughter cell detaches from the mother cell and leads the independent life this is one kind of budding and if you see the fragmentation is seen in the echinoderms let us see the starfish if any body part from the entire organism if it is detached and this detached part ultimately undergo regeneration and forms a new organism the fragment which is detached from the body of the organism will develop into a complete organism these are the best examples for the natural cloning process and here another example where you can see here the ovum get fertilized by a sperm and this is a zygote undergo division or cleavage and thereby the two cells identical cells of the zygote if they detach from each other and each and every cell tend to develop into a complete organism they are called as the identical twins those which share the placenta and coming to the artificial cloning that is cloning of gene cells and organism with intervention of the human being is called as the artificial cloning based on the nature of clones artificial cloning is divided into three major types based on the nature of clones the artificial cloning is divided into three categories three types they are gene cloning cell cloning and the animal cloning whereas if we take into consideration based on the aim of generation the artificial cloning is again categorized into two types they are reproductive cloning and the therapeutic cloning reproductive cloning and the therapeutic cloning see here we are seeing the reproductive cloning and the therapeutic cloning a reproductive cloning is the process of production of an animal through somatic cell nuclear transfer technique scnt which is identical to the donor animal the embryo produced is placed into uterine environment where it can implant and developed into a new organism whereas if we come to the therapeutic cloning in the therapeutic cloning it is the process of production of embryo 
stem cells for use in replacing or repairing damaged tissues or organs achieved by transferring a diploid nucleus from body cell into an enucleated egg that is for the therapeutic usage for the treatment purposes and coming to the methods of cloning so there are three types cell cloning animal cloning and the gene cloning let us start with the cell cloning cell cloning is the process of generation of many identical copies from a single cell the formed clones are genetically morphologically physiologically identical cloning in unicellular organisms is quite simple when compared to the cloning in multicellular organisms where in the multicellular organisms it requires a standard media cell cloning involves the process connected with the production of population of cells derived from a single somatic cell these cells are grown in culture in the laboratory the cloning of continuous cell lines is much easier than primary cell cultures and finite cell lines and cell cloning is done always done in two ways number 1 monolayer culture and number 2 suspension culture the monolayer culture the vessels used for the monolayer culture are petri dishes multi well plates or flasks the individual colonies of cells can be easily removed from the surface where they are attached whereas in the suspension culture cloning can be executed in suspension by seeding cells into viscous solution or gels the individual colonies of daughter cells formed in suspension remain intact these are the two methods monolayer culture and the suspension culture coming to the third one that is a dilution cloning or dilution technique where it is most commonly used technique for cloning of monolayer cells and involves following stages these cells are trypsinized the cells are trypsinized to produce single cell suspension the cells are diluted for 3 to 4 days to get suitable cell density these cells are then trypsinized to produce single cell suspension the cells are diluted for 3 to 4 steps to get a suitable cell density these cells are then seeded in culture vessels like multi well dishes petri dishes or plastic bottles later these culture vessels are incubated under appropriate conditions for 1 to 3 weeks the individual colonies can be isolated by any of the three methods the cloned cells can be directly isolated from multi well dishes which contain only single cell or a single cell distinct colony originating from a single cell by method of trypsination of wells the clones the clones can be isolated from petri dishes by using colony uh, cloning rings which are placed around the desired colonies after the medium is poured the cell colony in stainless steel teflon or prosilene cloning ring is trypsinized separately cells are suspended in medium and seeded in a well of multi well plate or in a flask the desired colony may be protected and the remaining colonies are irradiated by a lethal dose the protected colony is trypsinized and the cells are cloned in the same plate and the irradiated cells serve as the feed layer so this is about the dilution cloning coming to the next one that is a fusion cell uh, fusion cell cloning it is a process in which the nucleus from an unfertilized egg is replaced with the nucleus from a different cell if the nucleus of the egg cell is replaced with the embryonic cell it is called embryonic cell cloning if the nucleus of the egg cell is replaced with an adult cell it is called adult cell cloning the sheep dolly was the first mammal to be cloned using adult cell cloning method see here these are the 
memory cell donor cultured memory cells nucleus is removed egg cell from ovary cells are fused grown in the nucleus from the memory cell then grown in the culture this is the early embryo implanted in uterus of the third sheep surrogate mother and embryonic development takes place so the resultant lamb is the dolly which is genetically identical to the mammary cell donor then coming to the advantage of the cell cloning the cells having a recombinant dna for the production of substances like the enzymes hormones and antibiotics can be generated enormously and cell cloning is helpful in studying the effect of different factors on the structure and function of the identical cells cell cloning helps in studying the process of differentiation cell cloning is useful in maintenance of pure uh, cell lines and the in the single cell organisms the cell cloning is useful in the isolation of biochemical mutants cell cloning is useful in the development of homogeneous cell lines from heterogeneous cell cultures cell cloning is useful for obtaining cell strains with marker chromosomes cell cloning is useful in develop hybridoma clones and finally cell cloning is useful in the maintenance of recombinant dna and cdna libraries these are the advantages of the cell cloning and coming to the animal cloning animal cloning is the process of generation of genetically identical animals the attempt for animal cloning has begun in 1950s a nucleus from an embryo cell of frog was transferred to an inoculated egg the fused egg cell uh, has underwent divisions and gave birth to a tadpole since then cloning experiments have been done in different animals megan and morag were the two lambs produced at the rosenin institute of edinburgh in the year 1995 under the leadership of ian wilmot they used genetic material from cultured cells that were derived from the 9 day old embryo the sheep dolly was first successful cloned animal until 2005 15 many species were cloned included cat cattle deer dog frog fruit fly goat horse mouse rat pig rabbit sheep water buffalo and wolf etc and there are different methods where the methods involved in the animal cloning they are nuclear transfer embryo transfer and the blastomere separation nuclear transfer and embryo splitting and the blastomere separation see where uh, first we'll start with the somatic cell nuclear transfer this method involves the transfer of the nucleus from a donor cell to a recipient cell the nuclear transfer is done with help of micro injection method or electrofusion method the recipient cell is usually an unfertilized egg cell the donor cell may be a cultured cell derived from an embryonic cell or somatic cell derived from fetus or an adult the nucleus is removed from the egg cell with the help of an ultra fine micro pipette the cultured donor cell is fused with the enucleated egg the fused cell is implanted into uterus of surrogate mother the fused cell undergoes division and develops into an animal so here we are using the somatic cell nuclear transfer method and coming to the embryo splitting embryo splitting is the simplest form of cloning it was described by willesden and pogil in the year 1981 monozygotic twin calves have been produced through embryo splitting this method involves mechanical separation of early stage embryos the two celled embryo derived from in vitro fertilization 
is held in place with micro pipette under a microscope the zona pellucida and the other is placed into an empty zona pellucida are allowed to develop without zona pellucida the embryos can be cultured in vitro for few days the two embryos are then transferred to an unrelated surrogate mother the pregnancy of the mother is monitored by ultrasound the mother gives birth to two identical twins this is about the embryo splitting method and coming to the third one blastomere separation this method involves the in vitro fertilization of an egg cell with a sperm the resulting embryo is allowed to divide until it forms a mass of about four cells or eight cells the outer coating of embryo is removed and placed in a solution which causes the separation of blastomeres the each blastomere is put in culture where it forms an embryo consisting of same genetic constitution as the original embryo each new embryo is then implanted into the uterus of a surrogate mother to develop then there are different cloned animals and the mammal cloning timeline in 1984 a live lamb was cloned from the sheep embryo cells 1986 early embryo cells were used to clone a cow 1993 cows were produced by transfer of nuclei from cultured embryonic cells 1995 two sheep named megan and morag were cloned using embryo cells 1996 birth of dolly the first organism to be cloned from a fully differentiated adult cell in 1997 transgenic sheep named polly was cloned containing a human gene for a particular recombinant protein previously when the clone was uh, dolly was cloned dolly was created by a somatic cell nuclear transfer technique the adult somatic diploid differentiated cells were taken from the order of a 6 year old findarset white sheep and cultured in in vitro the division of the cells was arrested and were introduced into the z0 stage by applying low concentration of the serum in the medium an unfertilized egg cell was taken from a scottish block face eve the nucleus was removed leaving only the embryo empty egg cell containing the cellular machinery necessary to produce an embryo both cells were allowed to fuse with help of electric pulses the fused cells were also cultured in the ligand oviducts of sheep and allowed to develop into an embryo up to marula or blastula stage after culturing for 6 days it was implanted into the surrogate mother another scottish black face eve dolly was born resembling fin dorset uh, fin dorset white sheep which was the donor of the somatic cells then this is the poly containing the human gene for the blood clotting factor 9 in 1997 a team led by dr ian wilmot and keith campbell united kingdom created the first sheep with a human gene in every cell of its body the genetically engineered lamb is named poly so this is the process of uh, producing the lamb that is the dolly so this is the process and come to the cloned monkeys neeti and ditto were two monkeys cloned in 1997 rhesus monkeys were cloned in the year 1999 and 2007 and cloning of mice in 1998 50 mice were cloned from adult cells in 2006 mouse was cloned from the frozen cells also in the july 1998 in university of hawaii 50 mice were successfully cloned from the adult cells in japan in the year 2006 a mouse was cloned from frozen cells of dead mouse that died 16 years ago 16 16 years ago and come to the goat and pigs piglets were cloned in the year 2000 by japanese group the pashmina goat was cloned in sheri e kashmir university of kashmir agriculture science and technology of kashmir sciences in 2012 and named nuri 
and come to the advantages of animal cloning production of animals with the desirable traits enables the acceleration of reproduction of most productive livestock and minimize use of antibiotics growth hormones and other chemicals used to increase the population of endangered species helps in multiplication of transgenic animals with great efficiency employed in mass production of animals with a desirable set of traits great advantage in field of medicine agriculture and the research here different cloned animals are named differently a rat the cloned rat is named as ralph which was created in 2003 cat copy cat 2001 little nicky in 2004 camel inzas 2009 water buffalo samrupa 2009 sheep megan and morag 1995 differentiated embryonic cells and dolly 1996 from the somatic cell nuclear transfer dog snoppy 2005 horse prometia 2003 and coming to the one more important topic that is the gene cloning gene cloning is the production of exact copies of a particular gene or segments of dna using genetic engineering techniques the insertion of fragments of dna carrying a gene into a cloning vector and subsequent propagation of recombinant dna molecules into many copies is known as the gene cloning the process of gene cloning is classified into seven steps the steps involved in the gene cloning number 1 identification of desired dna and vector dna number 2 generation of dna fragments number 3 integration of dna insert into vector number 4 introduction of recombinant vector into host cells number 5 selection of organism containing our dna number 6 screening for colonies with the desired dna with the desired dna insert and seventh one amplification and purification of isolated recombinant vector dna let us start with the first one identification of desired dna and vector dna the first step in gene cloning is the isolation of gene of interest the gene of interest is usually a fragment of dna encoding human protein for example insulin the suitable vector vector is identified and isolated in order to clone the desired dna the vector transports the gene of interest into a host cell which is usually a bacterium or any living cell the vector multiplies within host cell and produces numerous identical copies the desired dna fragments are obtained by digestion of dna with the help of restriction enzymes the restriction enzymes recognize the specific sequence and cut the gene at specific site to produce cohesive or blunt ends the dna fragments can also be generated by mechanical shearing of genomic dna or cdna root that is a reverse transcriptase method or by hybridization method or by chemical synthesis method so there are the various methods to be followed to identification of the desired dna and the vector dna molecule and here in the generation of dna fragments what we did is here this is the entire genome of the individual the red colored one is the desired dna fragment so this is the after the fragmentation we will remove the gene of interest so there is cloning vector and the eukaryotic chromosome both of them they are digested with a single kind of restriction endonuclease enzymes and thereby we will remove the dna fragment we will remove a uh, complementary fragment from the cloning vector and both of them fused together here so this is the recombinant plasmids here we are using the restriction endonuclease enzyme for the incision and integration of the dna inserted into the vector so we have removed the dna fragment from here 
and also from the vector both of them get removed and we are integrating the dna for interest into the plasmid vector desired dna is inserted into vector dna to produce hybrid dna molecule dna ligase catalyzes the formation of covalent bonds joining both vector and desired dna molecules the inserted dna along with vector is called as recombinant dna or hybrid dna or primary dna dna is produced by cohesive end ligation or blunt end ligation or by homo polymer homo polymer tailing or with the use of linker molecules and the adapter molecules finally we will form the hybrid dna and then we will introduce the recombinant vector into the host cell the recombinant vector carrying the desired gene needs to be transferred to suitable host cell the most predominant host in gene cloning are the bacterium for example escherichia coli and fungus like the yeast the insect or mammalian cells can also be utilized as the host cells there are several methods are employed to introduce the recombinant vector into the host cell and some of them include transformation transduction and the electroporation transformation it is a process where a host incorporates recombinant dna and express the foreign dna so the cell made competent to take up dna competent cells they undergo electroporation the poke holes in membrane and calcium chloride makes cells more permeable to dna and coming to the transformation transfection it is the process of transfer of foreign dna into cultured cells through chemicals introduced into the bacterial well the cloning vector used as the aspects of a virus the host cell can be infected that is a transfected to insert the recombinant molecule and coming to the electroporation it is a process where high voltage electric pulses are applied to increase the permeability of cell membrane allowing dna to cross the cell membrane the cell is placed in an electric field such that the small pores are temporarily opened in the membrane added dna can enter through these pores and there are other methods like the micro injection method it is a process where dna is introduced to directly into the living cells with the help of micro syringe by observing under a phase contrast microscope otherwise we may go for the transduction it is a process where dna is packed into the virus derived particles and introduction of the encapsulated dna into the cell through virus like particles and there is another method lipofection it is a process where dna is introduced into the cell through liposomes so there are different methods may be followed so here we can observe this is a micro injection and it is a projectile gun and here we can the transfection so finally we will insert the desired dna fragment plasmid into the host cell and selection of organism containing the recombinant dna recombinant bacteria selected for culture using antibiotic resistance test and nutritional complement test or immunochemical method or colony hybridization or plaque lift method during transformation some of the host cells receive recombinant dna while some receive an altered vector and a majority of host cells are without any vector cells bearing the plasmid will survive when exposed to antibiotic while those that have failed to take up the plasmid sequence will die off the selection of transformed host cell is easily achieved by the presence of two selectable markers namely ampicillin and the tetracycline in the vector the desired dna is integrated with one of the two selectable markers while the other marker provides the basis for selection of transformed cells recombinant plasmids are identified by the fact that they are ampicillin resistant and will grow in the presence of the ampicillin 
screening of desired colonies is done by the methods like the blue white screening positive selection vector diagnostic restriction digest nucleic acid hybridization and antibody probes cloning pcr and dna sequencing blue white screening is a widely used screening technique to examine the vector based gene cloning the recombinant vectors transformed into a competent bacterial cell are grown in presence of exgal that is 5 bromo 4 chloro indolyl beta d glucopyranosid transformed with vectors containing recombinant dna will produce white colonies cell transformed with non recombinant plasmid grow into blue colonies and amplification and purification of isolated recombinant vector dna the colonies consisting of recombinant vector are transferred into nutrient medium and the bacterial cells are allowed to grow overnight the culture consists of a huge number of identical host cells are harvested for the isolation of vector dna the recombinant vector dna is then purified from the harvested bacterial cell lysates and the purified recombinant vector dna is dissolved in an appropriate buffer solution the cloned gene is isolated from the vector by digestion with restriction enzyme and is confirmed with dna sequencing so there are different methods uh, for the amplification and the purification of isolated recombinant dna so these are the different methods to be followed and coming to the advantages of the gene cloning they play an important role in the synthesis of recombinant proteins like vitamins hormones and antibiotics this helps in study of complete dna sequence of genome of very large number of copies helps in exploration of genetic diversity within individual species helps to treat dreadful disorders with the replacement of defective genes used to generate probes that are used for examining gene expression and finally it helps in the formation of colony of desired dna these all are the different methods of cloning namely cell cloning animal cloning and the gene cloning by this we will conclude this topic thank you thank you one and all